Good morning. Um, my name is Nima Ebinan. I'm chairman of neurosurgery in Mannheim, Germany, together with uh, Dr. Rock Chen. You should introduce yourself, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm Rock Chen. Uh, I'm here uh, with uh, Dr. Jia Mokos. I'm here as a cerebrovascular uh, director and skull base uh, surgeon here. Um, let's start at the next uh, section here. Yeah, so our first speaker, um, due to the change of program, is Francisco Gonzalez Lanos from Spain. He will talk about management of complex cerebral aneurysms. Uh, thank you very much, Jax, uh, for this invitation. I, yeah. I'm going to talk about the uh, management of complex. I put it in interrogation because complex is a very subjective uh, and dynamic concept. But the problem always is. Of course, we only have our shrine where we go from time to time. People we heard of, we learn, we, uh, we stayed. And these people had the willing to develop the, the surgery of the aneurysms. Of course, we are living in the age of the IA, but so far the IA doesn't solve the problem. Or what is the decision to treat an aneurysm? If we read the, the literature, it's always the same. The future, we have to be better operating. will be a small uh, amount of cases for operation because of the coiling is doing better and better. We are developing smaller approaches, minimal invasive for only competing with endovascular. And it's always the more or less the same. Coiling might be safer, but uh, it's not as a permanent treatment as uh, surgery. I asked a, a chap uh, GPT for a first verse poem about how difficult it is to unify the treatment of brain aneurysms. And it was very beautiful, but nothing. In the brain, enigmatic beats, aneurysm, hidden challenge, life hands by a fragile thread. In science and love, we find shelter. It's very beautiful, but it means nothing. And it's the problems. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know you are a poet, but this is chat GPT in this case. Uh, I would like to uh, discuss a few topics, but to leave clear what is the, the now the, the role of surgery in, in aneurysms. Paraclinot aneurysms, multiple aneurysms, flow diverter, and rupture cases, because in many places in my country, they say that uh, it's very uh, risky to treat surgically uh, rupture cases. Uh, the the paraclinoid aneurysms, you will agree with me that there are two things here, pituitary function and the, the visual thing. Of course, it is, these are the risks and we have to choose the better way to preserve those. Of course, a lot of things might happen, but in good hands, it's not the case most of the times. Uh, for the uh, paraclinoid, the very important thing is the, the projection of, uh, and we have superior, medial and lateral. They are uh, different. This is a classical medial, you know, distally are superior hypophysial, proximal carotid cave. This is a carotid cave. This is an example. Here, we only have compression with this projection, problem, uh, problem with the pituitary function, not with the visual, because it's an inferior projection. What is the problem with surgery in these cases? In these cases, this is a, we always do the same, very small opening, a mini terional. The problem is that we have to totally release the distal dural ring. And so, so in, in some way we can, and we have to use fenestrated glyphs. We have to put at risk the, visus, uh, the, the, the optic nerve in these cases, surgically. But we can do it, of course. With the lateral ones, there is nothing here. There is no uh, problem related with the uh, optic nerve, no problem related with the pituitary stock. But in these cases, the problem is different. In these cases, the lateral ones, tend to be what we call transitional. Uh, opening, uh, this is the only intra intradural part. So for these cases, even if this was a rupture case with a miniterional approach to, we have to put temporary grip in the, in the neck only for the releasing of the distal dural ring. So this is still difficult for in, in regular hands for surgery. But we have the most frequent uh, type of these aneurysms. This is a traditional ophthalmic aneurysm. 
with a superior medial projection. This is compressing the optic nerve. This, uh, 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 and here, surgery is quite easy. And 100% of the times, instantly releases the compression of the optic nerve. You see, we are using very small craniotomies, not for a reason, because we don't need more in this case. This is a very straight clip. We don't need any kind of angulation or nothing. So in these cases, to sum it up, uh, paraclinoid. Many places say, no, all for uh, endovascular. We don't agree. Of course, for, for, uh, for us, this upper projection, the uh, surgery is the first option, and for the other two, medial and lateral, could be endovascular. Of course, we can push, we can operate all of them, or they can embolize all of them, but this would be the most reasonable thing. Thinking about vision, thinking about pituitary stock. The multiple aneurysms, the other topic. Multiple aneurysms, many places, you would say, no, I'm not going to open the, 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 the skull twice. You don't need that. We need a rational for that. Of course, we use for most of the, Supatentorial aneurysms, we use the, uh, the mini terrional approach. You can combine it with a tradition going dead supraorbital. The good thing of the terrional is that you can go contralateral or multiple. This is the, the, the a standard approach for the ipsilateral uh, vessels. And you can go, of course, to the, <clears throat> to the ECOM, but only releasing, only opening cisterns, you can reach the other side. This is the important thing. So we divide the, uh, the aneurysms for uh, in this multiple management of aneurysms, lateral and medial, lateral, all the MCA and all the ICA aneurysms, and medial, uh, basilar, and ACA aneurysms. Uh, what is, uh, we think, the, the question we ask ourselves is, what are the best, uh, the best option for the, these aneurysms? For the lateral ones, we, Almost all we would agree that ICA bifurcation and MCA uh, aneurysms are much better for for uh, for surgery because ICA bifurcation recanalize many times and MCA uh, are difficult for more difficult for for embolization and for MCA um, a, a common aneurysms ACA aneurysms we think that uh, surgery is better it's arguable and you you might think that not but it's the important thing to uh, make the decision. We have two situations with multiple aneurysms. We can uh, manage all the aneurysms through a single uh, terrional approach, or we uh, the aneurysms are not accessible through a single terrional approach. Um, in, in multiple aneurysms accessible by a terrional approach, we have three uh, scenarios. One, two, or more ipsilateral aneurysms, one medial, Maybe a, a, a com or basilar plus a lateral, a lateral aneurysm and contralateral aneurysms. We almost uh, we make the decision based on is the, uh, if there is one more favorable aneurysm for surgery, we do all by surgery, unless it's very risky to do all the aneurysms by surgery. This is the condition. With when the aneurysms are not accessible by through a, a terrenal approach, uh, one example would be having a distal ACA aneurysm and um, a lateral MCA or ICA, or whatever, or when you have posterior force aneurysms, FICA, ICA, things like that. In these cases, in multiple aneurysms, we select the, the most important to treat, and then we can uh, use both endovascular or surgical, or it's different situation. This would be uh, a common uh, a common scenario. Lateral and medial, we have an MCA, left MCA, and an ACOM. And in this case, the, the rupture case is the ACOM. But we decide to go to, uh, the, it's looking to the other side, to the right side, but we prefer to go. If there weren't, uh, there wasn't any aneurysm on the left side, MCA, we'd have, we'd, we would have gone from the right side. But in this case, we do the, the, the we go uh, to the left side because we, want to treat both at the same time. There is no problem, even if it's looking to the other side, you know, because you can use fenestrated clips, and in this case, like this. The other situation is this. You have contralateral, and you have to make a, a very wise uh, decision in this case. In this case, we have a, a quite large uh, right MCA, a small of an early branch 
left uh, MCA an ACOM aneurysm and a Proxima A1 left uh, aneurysm. We choose, the, in this case, the, the most uh, difficult uh, aneurysm site to do uh, <clears throat> to, to start with. And in this case was the right, uh, the, the, the most difficult aneurysm was the, 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 the right MCA in this case. But you see, I, I want to show you only the contralateral dissection. This is the point. It's not a matter of how brave you are to go into the other side. It has to be safe. Now I'm working on the contralateral. I'm working from the right to the left. I'm putting a temporary clip. I'm controlling almost everything. The only thing you have to be in mind, you have to keep in mind, is that you can control most of the time the distal branches when you do this. You can use, like in this case, a fenestrated clip. But if you can do, you have to keep that in mind. So contralateral is very nice, very elegant, but you don't control the distal. The distal branches many times. You have to do that in, in, in which case the, we did all the aneurysms. This is the, the, the CT post-op to see where we've been. No problem if you do it right, but you, hit, you, have, you have to be very thoughtful, very sensible when you go to the other side because of the control. And then sometimes all the aneurysms are not reachable for a single uh, uh, approach. In this case, like in this case, this is a, a, a woman working in our hospital. He uh, showed up in, in the hospital with a 0 0.2, uh, with a decreased vision, 0 0.2 in the, in the left eye. And she had a, a, a distal ACA, a pica, a petrus aneurysm, and a, and a giant, um, and a giant paracline. Of course, it's about vision. We did it that, and 0 0.9, uh, one week later. And then we left the rest for the, the other days. This is, should be the rational. And now go to the rapture cases. I want to show you our, our, uh, our cases. Should we treat, uh, should be treated uh, surgically? Now in my country, in Spain, it's amazing, but I go to uh, most of the places. I don't, they don't operate and uh, rapture cases. And the most important uh, cause of, of death as long as they reach the hospital are rebleeding so you can solve that um and the question is do we harm the patient i want to show you my my data uh, my my thought always had been if you do a good surgery in grade uh, one and two of the uh, world federation classification there is of course you can operate you can embolize because they usually go much better but with grades Three and four. If we operate and we wash up all the blood in the cisterns, we don't damage the brain, and we open the uh, lamina terminalis cistern, uh, the lamina terminalis release the third ventricle, we can achieve better results. It's always the same story. You see, it's um, you enter and the the brain is about to explode, and when you leave, you do this, you wash, you wash everything, and you open the lamina terminalis. And you can release things. And what happens with this? I'm going to show you. We uh, collected our cases to 206 uh, and seven cases from 2002 um, years and, and a half in, in my team. And there were uh, 41 cases with no aneurysms. So we left with 166. Okay, the, this is, are the locations. You see the most frequent in our, in our uh, hospital is always ACOM. And you see the fissure grades and the work uh, and the WFNS grade. You see, we have a lot of grade one, and then we have grades four and five, and fissure four are predominant. We operated on 86, and we embolized uh, 66. And no treatment in very bad cases, they didn't reach the OR, we're 14. Okay, let's check the results. If we divide that with groups, we will see grade ones were uh, more uh, brown is uh, surgical, blue is uh, embol uh, embolization. You see, especially in grade five, we operated more. In grade, in grade four, we operated exactly the same. But in grade three and two, we operated more than we embolize. This is interesting to check the result. And also in the, in the, in the, and so this is the first mm -hmm. feature where, uh, for more, most of them. And you see, uh, according to location, ACOM again is the 
and MCA were the most frequent with ICA. And we will see the results, passos passing. Surgical, we had 20, uh, 20 per, uh, 20 endovascular 21, but it wasn't statistically significant. But again, no, no problem with surgery. When we go to scissors, again, uh, mm, surgical 3.48, uh, uh, endovascular 3.3, almost the same, and it's not statistically significant. But we go to hydrocephalus, with uh, uh, the patient needing uh, need to uh, need EBD, where 40, 46 percent in surgical cases and 65 percent in endovascular cases, and this is statistically significant. And then with the the, the total uh, amount of hydrocephalus was 50 percent in endovascular cases, 31 in surgically. So it's and again this is statistically significant. When rebleeding, it's a, a rare uh, event in both, as it's not statistically significant. But and ischemia, very important. Uh, we we saw more ischemia in surgical cases, uh, 17 against uh, 13. But again, it's not statistically significant. Ischemia, delayed ischemia, 16 surgically, 15 almost the same no differences and the most important the only important thing the cost outcome the results we see that surgical were good in 73 disabled 15 death 11 endovascular 17 uh, 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 76 good for disabled less uh, fewer uh, disabled but much mortality more or less the same and again mm, it's not statistically significant but it's quite quite uh, significant significant and to finish so to sum it up yeah and the, the last thing <clears throat> flow diverters one minute only very go uh, flow reverters have changed uh, it was definitely a breakthrough in neurosurgery because all we all have seen cases like this uh, impossible to treat any other in but if we abuse of flow diverter, especially if we use flow diverter in small vessels, we can end up with flow divertomas. And this is a problem. This is a, a patient sent to us with um, uh, embolization, it's a PCA aneurysm, then re uh, rechanneling and regrowth, embolization plus flow diverter. And then we, they ended up occluding the PCA, but the aneurysm was still growing because it has turn into a tumor it has uh, something happens in the in the wall of these things and we we all know this happens and we have to um, do it uh, excuse me in 3d but you see we can you come to your conclusion yeah. Kiko, and we use the the keyboard to release everything to sum it at the conclusions microsurgically is still alive in the treatment of aneurysms multiple aneurysms the considerations we use you you seen many times uh, surgery is better um, and beware of flow diverters in ACM and PCA. Thank you very much.